Um, so, hello and welcome to our second lesson in our study of scientific computing too. So, we are learning the Python programming language, right? Okay, so, in this lesson, we will focus on the print function, the data types in Python, and we are going to assess ourselves on these concepts, okay? So, I'm going to kind of read off a final student of mathematics, KNST, and I'll be taking you through this lesson. Please don't forget to like the video if it helps you. And subscribe to the channel if you're having some more videos okay so you should have your your environment set up okay so that you can start writing some small codes so the print function in python so the print function in python is a function that outputs to your console window whatever you want to print out so in other words the print function is used for displaying output to the computer screen and it is the most powerful inbuilt function in python most of the time if you want to learn how to program in any programming language the first code that you are introduced to is how to use a print function to do something and mostly what we do is to use a print function to print hello world so that's mostly the first code or the first script that every beginner learns how to write and i think that's fun isn't it so let's look at our first program in python that we are going to create okay so the first program which is written in most programming languages as i've said earlier is hello world and the code to use in implementing this in python is this so print hello world okay so the print function okay when we write a print function everything is in small letters if you could recall in the previous video i told you that most of the keywords in python and the functions are in lower case okay so print is in lower case then you open parentheses you close it then whatever you want it to print you write it okay so you see hello world it's a string don't worry in this video we'll talk about data type so you know what a string is and so we put it into double quotes or symbol single quotes so you can see this one is double quotes okay we could have also used single quotes okay so if i should write print hello world you can see here i use words single quotes so if you use single quotes for the starting that means you end also with a single quote then if you use double quotes from the beginning you should also want to end it with a double quote right so let me illustrate that here for you and see so i'm using the python IDE console okay so So you see when I did print hello world, then the code has what printed to me was hello world, right? So you can see here I started with what um, double quotes. So I had to end with double quotes. So I can also use single quotes. That also worked right but if i use single quote to start and i end with a double quote i'm going to get error or vice versa so we don't do that so you let's let me last you that in the same so you see i started with a double quote i'm ending with a single quote see what i get i get an error okay so you should know that is very important okay so that's our first program that we can write in python so you can choose to write this in your console or write this in a test file okay so you can open a new test file and write this one inside and you run it so maybe yes let's open a new test file so i'm coming to open a new test file so i now have a new test file then i write print hello world okay so i save it how should i save it okay i'm saving as one okay i think i already have two dots py all right so you know the extension is already but there is no need for me to even add the extension because python will automatically add it but for some of you where well, you know that test editors you have to add the dots py to it okay all right so store it now and automatically the extension will be added to it so python.py because i'm storing them as python files okay so after 
creating this um, file and storing it, I can then run it. Then when I run it, you can see that it has what displayed what hello world. Very fantastic. So that's the print function in Python. The one of the powerful built-in functions in Python. Okay. So um, these are various ways in which we can use the um, the print function in Python 3 to print hello world. So you can see with the first one, the same as the second one, just that that one we have double quotes and here we have single quotes. Okay. And you can see here too, we have hello as one string and another then command then world. Okay. So here the command here, it just concatenate the two strings. Okay. So it adds hello and world and we get hello world. So you can print, you can input all these in your console or whatever you want and this will be the output. So these are some examples here that you can try out. Okay. So um the truth is that what we are doing now is going to be a bit boring, okay, because um we are now trying to learn the basis, the foundation, some of the rules. So you have to learn them gradually very soon when you get to some stage we'll put all of them together and use them to do something great okay okay so things to note the table on the previous slide right this table represents how the print function can be used and it says note it is always mandatory to start with a bracket and close with a bracket as well right so that's how you can see we always start with what parentheses we close the parentheses okay then it says also you have to enclose the statement you want to be printed in a double quote or single quote since it is a string i've already explained that so now let's go to the data types in python okay so we have a lot of data types which are supported in python such as the boolean All right so the boolean is the true or false types okay <coughs> then we have the end for integers then we have units we have floating numbers for um, decimals we have complex numbers we have string we have the time we have enum right so after the time this slide was made these were the eight main data types that we had in python okay so yeah so don't worry i'll come back to the data type we will talk about them right but you should know that we have those data types and i'll explain to them what they are right so we have what we call um no so if python represents integers that's positive and negative whole numbers using the end type and it represents strings using the word str type so it says a string is usually a bit of text you want to display to someone Okay, so you see, we wanted to display hello world, so it was a string. Or a string can be defined as a sequential collection of characters. Hello is a sequential collection of characters, H E L L O. So that's what a string is in programming, okay? So strings are delimited by double or single quotes as long as the same kind are used at both ends. So whenever you want to tell Python or something is a string, you have to put it inside quotes, either double quotes or single quotes. And as I said, if you start with a double, you have to end with a double quote. If you start with a single quote, you end with a single quote. Okay. All right. So it says, in other ways, Python knows you want something to be a string when you put either double quotes or single quotes around the test. Okay. And it says, an empty string is simply one with nothing between the delimiters. All right. So this here. So here I'm printing the string called Randolph, right? But you see this one is an empty string because I don't have anything inside. So it prints nothing. It's an empty string. It prints a space. Okay. So that's what an empty string is. So let's continue. So in Python, both the string and integer data type and are immutable and in programming when we say something is immutable it means that once their values are set their values cannot be changed okay when we talk we are talking about the collection data types like pi and um, list and tuple you really get to understand this thing that we mean by mutable and immutable okay 
So another important data type is the float data type, which is for point values, the decimals. For example, 2 is an integer, but 2.5 is a float. So it can only be supported by the float data type, but not the int data type. Okay. So we have something we call the type function. And the type function retains the data type, also known as a class of the data item given. All right. So I think this one is illustrated here. So let's do some practice here in our console. So you said I said my name is Randolph. So name is equal to Randolph, right? So let me do type of name. Just tell me what name is what? A string. S T R a string, right? Then let me do something like number. Is equal to 90. You know, since it is a number, we don't put it inside the quotes because it's not a string, right? So, this number is it an integer or a float? It's an integer because we are mathematicians, we know that. So, let's see what Python will tell us. So, Python tells us that it is what? Int integers. Mm -hmm. So now let me write a is equal to 91.2. The Python will tell me 91.2 is what a float that is contained as mouse. Okay, so there are lots of them, right? Mm. So you see, type of true. Python will tell me true is what a boolean operator and the rest. And so we have a lot of them. Let me do the last one. Maybe for complex numbers. So we have two ways of entering complex numbers in Python. Okay, so I can just write them straightforward. You know, a complex number has a raw part and imaginary part. And I know with most of the things that we learned, we represent the imaginary part with i. But in Python, the imaginary part is represented with g. So maybe 2 plus 6g. Mm -hmm. So Python will tell me that's what. A is what a complex number now. So the second way in which you can represent a complex number in Python by saying A is equal to complex. So the complex takes two arguments: the real part and the what imaginary part. So two comma six. <coughs> then you go to the type of A to tell you that it is what complex. Okay. So those are the data types that we have in Python. Some of them. When you see data types in Python, that means the things Python can what support. Okay. So let's assess ourselves on what we've learned so far. So can you please pause the video and try to answer these two questions? Okay, so in five, four, three, two, one. Right, so let's answer them. So it says, when the following is typed in the console, what will be the output? So is it A, is it B, is it C, is it D? Okay. So if you selected anything other than D, please, you are wrong. You know why? It's because, see the print here. The print here is capital P. And we know that the print is supposed to be in lowercase, all everything. So if you type this in Python, you can type it in your console now. You're going to get an error. Okay, so the answer is D. Now let's go to question two. You see, which of the following should be typed in the console if we want hello, comma, world, exclamation, to be displayed? So let's analyze. So... What do you think is the answer? So you can type all this in your console and you realize that it is only C and D which is going to give you this here. Hello world that we have here. Okay. All right. I hope they are cool. Then it says, what is the delimiter for a string? So the answer is A, right? When we start with the double quotes, we have to end with what? A double quote as well. And it can also be C. When we start with a single quote, then we end with what? A single quote. So the answer can be A or C. Then the 
Question 2 says, what is the data type for? 59. So is 59 an integer? Is it a string? Is it a float? Is it complex? So what's the answer? Okay, so if you choose if you chose an integer, you are wrong. We can see that 59 here is inside what a double quote. That means 59 here is a string, not an integer. So the answer is being a string. And you say the data type float stands for so it stands for both negative and positive decimals. Okay, all right. Then question four says which syntax is used for checking the class of a data type in Python. So is it A, is it B, is it C, is it D? So the answer is A, the type function that we're using, okay? So thank you. That's the end of our second lesson. We've learned a lot. We learned about the print function, data types in Python, and we even assessed ourselves in it. Wow, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> so please, as I said, this part is going to be a bit boring because we are now learning the rules regarding what python then very soon you put them together to create useful things so see you in the third video thank you mm -hmm.